Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ. For those of you who have been following my channel for a bit, you may have seen me build computers. I've built small and simple computers, and I've built some large and complicated systems, and a few in between. But what you probably also noticed is that my personal computer has been, well, less than camera ready. In fact, it's been behind me here for about seven months, essentially a collection of components stuck on this homemade test bench. It's just a naked PC, and while I usually say computer cases are overrated, I also not only live in a house with people and pets, but I live in an area of Colorado that is a high plains desert and a desert means dust and dust means every month I have to do this disassemble the computer and clean it so here's my personal workstation in all its dirty pieces it doesn't look like much just sitting here on the workbench like this I guess it's more impressive when you stack up all the big flashy boxes But this is what a little more than $5,000 bought you a year ago. So I guess I should introduce you to the biggest and most expensive computer I've ever built for myself. At the heart, we have a 32 core, 64 thread, second gen Ryzen Threadripper 2990WX, which is on the Asus Zenith Extreme Alpha motherboard. Under here is a Samsung 970 EVO Plus M.2 SSD boot drive. And there are two more of the same on this DIM.2 riser card, which are my scratch and project drives. Here we have 64 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z RGB 3200 MHz CL16 memory. The graphics card is an EVGA RTX 2080 Ti Black Edition. It's powered by a Corsair HX 1200i 80 plus platinum power supply. Uh, there's also the Avermedia Live Gamer 4K capture card and my Enermax Lictec TR42 360 millimeter AIO, which I've completely flushed and refilled with non-corrosive coolant. I've actually done two videos on that process. And still back there on the desk is an eight terabyte Western Digital Blue hard drive, which is my temporary and asset storage. Now, you might be wondering why, if I could have spent all that money on the hardware, surely I could have bought a case. And I did, and it sucked. This, is the Thermaltake Level 20 XT. This is a beast of an aquarium or PC enclosure. And after completely disassembling it to each of its individual panels, sanding, priming, and painting, and reassembling, it actually held my system for about three months. Now, in all fairness to Thermaltake, the case was almost perfect for my original plans. I wanted the motherboard to mount horizontally because first, this motherboard weighs a ton. Plus, the original plan was for two 2080 Ti's until I experienced how fast the system was with just one. And I originally purchased the Cooler Master Wraith Ripper Tower Cooler for the system, but it really couldn't keep up with the 2990 overclocked. In any case, I didn't want to hang all that weight vertically. I also planned on filling the entire bottom of the case with hard drives as my RAID storage array. However, I've since switched to cloud storage as my backup because it's just so much simpler and cheaper. I get unlimited storage with daily backups for under 20 bucks a month. Besides all the changes I made to the PC itself, the one big problem this case has is airflow or lack of it. Now, before I bought it, I was skeptical about how much airflow an essentially glass box could deliver, but I did my due diligence and watched all the YouTube reviews I could find and everyone said the airflow was good. Shills. 
I'm kidding. I'm sure it was probably adequate for their test scenario. However, in my setup, not so much. I had two 200 millimeter fans in the front, but the amount of air they were able to pull through these small openings here was limited. But the biggest problem was the top fans, including the ones attached to my AIO. They just couldn't push air out of the top of the case. The top glass panel just reflected the hot air right back, choking the fans and pushing the hot air back into the case. I basically just used the case with the front and top panels removed, so an open air system. Now, I could get a new case, but I have a plan. I'm gonna turn this glass case into a mesh case. Well, the front and top panels anyway. Unfortunately, the machine shop I had fabricating some of the panels has been closed. Thank you, COVID. So I decided I'm going to try to fabricate some of the parts myself, beginning with the motherboard tray. The other thing this case lacks is cable management options. So I'm gonna fix that. What I have here is a piece of quarter inch aluminum, which I've cut to size and I've drilled and tapped the mounting holes for the motherboard. So the plan is today to use the motherboard to mark out where I need to drill out the pass-throughs for the various cables. Then I need to clean everything and put the system back together because I have work to do. In fact, this week's video, which should have already been uploaded last week, still needs to be edited. And all the footage is, well, on here. It's backed up there too, I'm not crazy. Anyway, I don't wanna put it back on my homemade open air bench again because not only do I really hate cleaning it every week, but the other day, Superman up there fell off the shelf and I found him wedged between the memory and the Dim.2 riser. A metal object falling into a $5,000 computer could have ended badly. So to avoid any other possible accidents, I'm gonna put the system in my Fantex P400 Alpha. I mean, it's just sitting on my shelf with my other empty cases anyway. I'm not sure if this case is rated for an EATX motherboard, but even if the board covers all the pass-throughs, there are other options. And it's only temporary. Once I get the PC back together, I'll drill out the new motherboard tray then I'll be able to start making the custom cables for the build. I won't bore you with that, I've already done that video. I'm not sure how long this whole build will take because while I can do some of the easier fabrication like the motherboard tray and maybe the top fan mounts to replace those rattly things that are in there, I do need the mesh panels for the front and top professionally fabricated. They have my CAD designs, I just need them to open back up. Anyway, that's the plan. Let's get started. I made mistakes, promises I break, but 
We're done. Thanks for sticking around. I got everything accomplished today that I needed to do. The system is clean. A side note on that, don't use a high pressure air compressor to clean off your PC components like I did. If your pressure is too high, you can actually blow SMDs right off the PCB. Also, in addition to air, your compressor compresses water vapor, so moisture can build up in the tank and you can end up blowing dirty water all over your $1,200 graphics card. Again, I'm at 7,000 feet in a high desert plain, so our average humidity level is like two. Anyway, it's clean and in its albeit temporary home, Everything went together with no major problems. The power supply is at the absolute max length for this case. It's so tight the power switch actually got in the way. I also wouldn't recommend this case for an EATX build. The board does completely cover the cable pass-throughs, but I may do. Cable management was tight, but I wasn't really going for perfection. Again, it's a short-term fix. The only major problem I ran in during the build was I filled my SD cards on two cameras and didn't have a way to offload the footage. But here we are, everything's working just like it was before, except the Aura lighting service, but does any RGB software actually work? I think that's it for this one. I have two videos to edit and then I'll get started on the custom cables. I did get a new spool of solid copper wire, so stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one. Now, need to get back to work.